This is Nichelle, the president and intern at the Cameron University Wesley Foundation. The Wesley Foundation is a Christian community that reaches students, grow disciples, and send servants. And you're listening to the CU Wesley Podcast. Today's scripture comes from Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey everyone, I am Michaela Drain and I am the Wesley Director at the Cameron University Wesley Foundation. Tonight we're talking about the topic of AI, artificial intelligence, and the overall question of the evening being, what is the role of faith in the AI debate? AI has become a popular topic in schools and in our culture. In our college ministry context, a few of you have shared how you are using AI to help you write papers. While some people not any of you, but definitely some people on TikTok. They are using it to write their whole papers. Uh, some of you have shared that you're using it more as a way to find inspiration when you are stuck or need a catchy introduction. I find that when talking to some of your professors about this, many of them are skeptical of AI. They say that they are worried that their students are not really engaging in the studying of their materials, and instead of comprehending their own unique thoughts about that material, AI are creating generalizations that can be copied and pasted to the situations that need unique and individual responses. And when it comes to the rest of the world's reaction to AI, there continues to be mixed responses mostly influenced by the Terminator movie series, but also based in reality. Some people worry that their jobs are being threatened by AI. People like artists, computer security, and recruiting application reviewers have already seen a decline in the demand for their work because there are AI who can supposedly do their job. It seems like AI is a topic that lays heavily on our hearts at the moment. So last month, I took some time to learn about the theological aspects and religious implications of the AI debate. So let's get into it. All right, so one of the first things I found about AI and religion is that there is actually a whole religion based around AI. One aspiring entrepreneur has already tried to make AI into a god. Andrew Lewandowski is an engineer who worked on Google's self-driving car project. He left Google to start his own self-driving car company. Lewandowski's new company was acquired by Uber. And Lewandowski has now created a religion based on artificial intelligence. The religion is called Way of the Future. The goal of the religion is to develop and promote the realization of a Godhead based on artificial intelligence, and through understanding and worship of the Godhead, contribute to the betterment of society. The religion was recently granted tax exemption status by the IRS, meaning that it's officially recognized as a religion at least by the government. So Lewandowski mentioned that AI is not a god in the sense that it's making lightning or causing hurricanes, but if there's something a billion times smarter than the smartest human, what else are you going to call it? So Lewandowski's religion is not the only religion based on artificial intelligence. There is also a philosophical and scientific movement called transhumanism that believes humans can and should use technology to become godlike beings. The goal of transhumanism is to use technology to enhance human abilities and to eventually create a human race that is immune to disease, can live forever, and is capable of creating its own universe. So transhumanism is a really big and theological word, so we'll take some time to dig into that as well. So transhumanism 
is a philosophical and scientific movement that advocates the use of current and emerging technologies. These technologies are things like genetic engineering, cryonics, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology. These technologies are used to augment human capabilities and improve the human condition. Transhumanists envision a future in which the responsible application of such technologies enables humans to slow, reverse, or eliminate the aging process. To achieve corresponding increases in human lifespan and to enhance human cognitive and sensory capabilities. The movement proposes that humans with augmented capabilities will evolve into an enhanced species that transcends the humanity or the post-human. So transhumanism has actually found some footing and support from Silicon Valley. A lot of entrepreneurs, including Google co-founder Larry Page, Amazon's Jeff Bezos, and Tesla's Elon Musk, are pretty avid supporters of transhumanism. So in 2013, Page launched Calico Life Sciences, or Calico Labs. It's a research and development company dedicated to extending the human lifespan through advanced technologies. And some articles talked about whether uploading your consciousness to the cloud would count as eternal life. I think Elon Musk is working on that one. And that really reminded me of a Black Mirror episode, which I don't think played out very well. I think it's called San Junipero. If you want to get freaked out by the idea of cloud consciousness and eternal life, that's a really good episode to play around with that thought. So back to reality and less about TV shows and movies. So currently the application for AI in faith, uh, some churches are using it in church research and studying. In the book, Understanding Religion Through Artificial Intelligence, Justin E. Lane looks at the reasons why humans feel they are a part of a religious group, despite often being removed from other group members by vast distances or multiple generations. To achieve this, Lane offers a new perspective that integrates religious studies with psychology, anthropology, and data science, as well as with the research at the forefront of artificial intelligence. So basically, he is able to look through all of these different areas of studies because he's using some AI to help him in his searches, kind of like we would do with Google. So being able to look through church research and historical files more quickly and efficiently has helped him to get that broader and bigger understanding of his research. Another area where AI is being used currently in the church is through improving outreach on social media. So these AI are helping churches to battle the algorithms so that they can generate more content and then adapt to the changing needs of these different platforms. This has helped them to get their message out to more people. And pastors are already using this as a way to summarize their sermons into like small sound bites, uh, creating captions, and I've even used it at times to transcribe our lessons. Another way that AI is being used currently in churches is as a source for giving 24-7 guidance. So this was a really new one that I had found while researching. AI technologies could, for instance, create a virtual biblical figure with which people could speak with and learn from. These bots are taught scripture and the ability to offer religious guidance from whenever and wherever you are. We see AI's ability to scan through sources and summarize being applied to scripture through people's use of the AI Jesus. So if you go on Twitch, there is currently a stream of an artificial intelligence Jesus, and he'll answer any question you ask him to the best of his abilities. And there's also apps where you can text Jesus and get replies. So these services use the written text of scripture to create an approximated response that sounds similar to the Jesus in scripture. 
And overall, the AI Jesus is made up of data sources, and it pulls from people's interactions with it. And typically, as people do on the internet, often they are trying to break the algorithm by asking it like homework questions or silly things that you really wouldn't find an answer for in scripture. So from what I've seen and read about these AI, they really aren't that bad. Um, AI Jesus usually just answers with generalizations and good morals, and that's fine, um, but it can be a little bit vague. So these AI biblical figures, to include Jesus, can stray into phrasings that create biased theologies. So the quickest example of this biased theology is in the phrasing of God. Typically, the AI uses the phrase he when talking about God, but many churches try to use that wider understanding of God as not just a pronoun or a male, but as God, which is not to say the same thing. There's a little bit of nuance, but that's difficult to describe to an AI. So, so far, there are also downfalls being seen of using AI in church. So, some of the downfalls we are already seeing about using AI in church is that the artificial intelligence leads people to rely more on the technology and less on relationships with other people. So, being a Christian, this that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, being a Christian means that you have a relationship with God and other people. If we are solely relying on technology to generate these almost human interactions, we can forget that there is something unique and special about having another human person to share and worship together. Another issue of AI being used in the church is that it can feel disingenuous. Prayers and sermons written by AI can sound not authentic, because it lacks that lived experience and human presence. God moves through human people, meaning our flaws and failures as humans. God uses that. Those are also a part of the story. So AI can help try to create these human-like stories, but it won't feel the same hearing it from an AI because their experience is just copied and pasted from another person's actual lived experience. So overall, with the current limitations of AI, I don't think uh, my job as a pastor is technically threatened. However, I don't think that Christians should ignore the topic of AI entirely. Artificial intelligence is being integrated more and more into the working world, and there are many benefits of its use when it comes to reaching new people and making disciples for the transformation of the world. And as long as we view AI as a tool to help aid the human interactions, and we still seek to have those personal relationships with others and God, then AI will continue to be a positive resource in our lives. So thank you for everyone who made this podcast possible. Thank you to the students who suggested the topic. Thank you to the people that helped me gather the resources for the lesson. And thank you to you, the listener. Without your support, none of this would be possible. Since winter break is approaching for us at the university, we'll be taking a short break here at the CU Wesley podcast. And while there won't be a theological discussion again until February, you may hear a few short bonus episodes here and there to keep you up to date on the cool ministry opportunities happening at the CU Wesley. Be sure to listen to the next episode, which is the discussion responding to this lesson. And until then, we'll see you later.